Ready? England 13 for no wicket. Chasing 273. Good luck yeah. with that, boys. Hi, Hello and welcome to um, resuming the Checkmate COVID uh, ECF Arena. It's a 24-hour marathon arena and uh, I'm very happy to have two grandmasters here, Grandmaster Julian Hodgson and Grandmaster Danny King, who are here to guide us through the next hour. Tash, it's nice to be here. Jules, great to see you. Yeah, great to see you, Dan. Great to see you, Natasha. And, um, you. Tash, how have things been going? Good, really good. We, we, we've got all sorts of strong players here. What you'll see is we're in the middle of um, Mickey Adams, I think. Uh, Mickey? The British. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, we've got to see Fiona against Big Al. So this is oh, uh, Fiona, Fiona against, Big Al. Antony against Ali Mortazavi. Oh, and I, Ali's looking doing really well. He's, is he? I think he's got a piece extra, hasn't he? Oh, Dan? Hey, oh, right. Let me count. Yes, <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but there is not an extra in any the night. That is a big night. But it what is. about what about some checks with the Queen? I'm a bit worried about yeah, the checks. Queen, Queen check. Then we're just going to block with the rook. Rook c seven. Yeah, I think. I mean, as we know, Ali's technique is phenomenal. F4 looks like a crushing move here. I think Ali's going to play F4. Yeah, it looks it okay. I'm a little, yeah, a little bit concerned about uh, doubling the rooks on the A file, but... Uh, I want to just go knight C7, rock-like. Just shut them out. Yeah, You'll probably have to give up a queen for two rooks, but... Yeah, yeah, that's it's, okay. comfort it's comfortable. It's comfortable. And I think, and, and yeah, it's F4. Well played, Ali. G4, I think, is pretty much forced. H5. And then H5. Job. And yeah. if the rooks double, then knight C7. And I mean, yeah. Ali, as we know, is a great technician. Um, <laughs> well, a fellow, a fellow Pauline. A fellow Pauline, exactly. <laughs> now knight C7, knight C7. And that's all she wrote. I spent... Do you know the funny thing is I spent most of my chess career battling against players from St Paul's. Yes, yeah. from St Paul's school. That's the funny thing. Right from when we were playing in the London under 12s, always the flipping St Paul's players. <laughs> I'm going to the names because I, I think Ali's got this under control and let's go to um Ferrari fan which is Robert Starley against Mickey Adams. And Mickey how's, how's Adams? How's oh, Mickey been doing? He's, he's played a little bit. He's been doing well in the ones he's played. Um, he hasn't done an all night shift, so he's uh, he's um, got so let's see how many points he's got. Um, oh, only two points. I think he's only just played a very few games. Okay, he's Mickey's got his pawn structure, hasn't he? He's got his four three on the king side pawn structure. It's not so easy. I mean, it's obviously better for Mickey. Black's better. But um, objectively, I would say white has good drawing chances. But I'd, I would say objectively, fantastic winning chances for black. Not, I mean, I don't wish to inject a note of controversy too much, but uh, I think this is a fantastic position for black because I hate the bishop. That bishop is dreadful. But what about our outside A pawn, Dan? I think it's going to drop. Does I that think... not concern you? No, no, not at not, all. Not even an incy wincy bit. Not really, because it's actually very difficult to get that. Queen going. A one, Queen C three is a good move. Oh no, he, oh, it's a blunder. Gonna... Boom! Boom! <laughs> he should have played Queen A one. Queen C three was wrong. He should have played Queen A one. Now he's going to lose. Now it's over. He's, he's okay, lost but, his form. but the thing is, even if Queen A one, E five, yeah. E five. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It's going to be very difficult. But, yeah. So this is just hopeless. Mickey's going to win this every day. Rook, oh, Queen G5, probably. Queen G5. Thing yeah. is, what's what's the time situation? Minute and a half. Mickey, Mickey's 20 seconds up. Yeah. Just Queen G5. Rook comes to D2, pawn E5. Then the knight can go... Round to F4. I mean, yeah, you're right. This is just game over now. Yeah. Rook D2, E5, and Mickey's going to win this. 
Tash, can we just have a, a quick recap on who's actually leading the, the, the yeah, competition? Yeah, let's see. Here you go. This is the leaderboard. So oh. way out in front is Keith Arkell, who has played uh, from five o'clock yesterday, and I think he's played pretty much solidly. He's, he seems to have stopped right now, um, but he's been playing all the way through the night. Uh, second is, this is Shreyas Real who again has, uh, he said he was, um, he tweeted he was going to play 20 out of 24 hours. So again, is is playing a lot. Uh, he's um, one of England's top junior players. Uh, then Nat Paul, Connie Monster, Isolani at home. And then Rock Troll, who we saw in the commentary box just now, is Tristan Cox was commentating with Amit. And then Kilcrit is Danny Gormali. Um, Danny Great yeah, player. he was Great. playing a lot yesterday and then he did have a sleep um, and then has been back in action today. And this is um, Thomas, Thomas, very strong yes. player. Yeah, and he's playing at the moment. Ferrari fan is Robert Starley. We just saw, uh, we're seeing now, in fact. Oh, look at this finish from Mickey. Oh, oh beautiful. Night G3. Check and that's all mate. Right. Brilliant. Mickey showing his tactical wizardry there. Beautiful. I like I think we've got about 250 players, maybe more. So there's a lot That's of really players. good, isn't it? That's fantastic. The other thing is, um, so so David Howell had a, um, a a big winning streak yesterday. We also had Peter Sfiddler joining today, so he was playing some games just before lunch. I saw he was. I saw a couple of his games. He's deadly, absolutely deadly. Oh, we better we better look at this one because this is Shreyas, who's in second place. Shreyas against, against Tom. Oh, this is a big match. Uh, what's going yeah. on here? Dutch defence from Thomas. And, oh, OK, what's the last move? Knight D6. So the time situation, 321. What, is it five minutes? Um, mm. uh, it's five five minutes. minutes and no increment. Quite, five minutes and no increment. It's, okay. it's funny because five, five minutes feels like something from the past a bit because, you know, most people, if they're playing Blitz, well, I mean, Bullet is another matter, but even Blitz, you know, is it's standard three minutes plus two seconds i i think three minutes plus two is i mean i on lead chess now i basically play a very slightly odd one i play two minutes plus one second increment but i need the increment because i play on my iphone with my fingers so i would have no very chance fast, two plus Pardon? one what? it's still very fast yeah who oh, two two minutes minutes plus one. One. yeah i mean my rating on lead chess is about I'm about twenty six thirty at that, so I'm not too bad. That's that's not shabby. That's not shabby at all. Very but, good. Um, I've been inspired watching Magnus Carlsen and all these guys, Nakamura and Wesley. So it's been amazing, amazing year of chess. Unbelievable. I must admit, I like the way Thomas is playing. Maybe rookie eight now. Line up on the e three pawn. Knight f five first. That's even better. And that E3 pawn is looking a very juicy target indeed. Indeed, Is he going to play rookie 8 now? Well, rookie 8, he's got to look at F takes G5, hasn't he? That knight takes E3. Knight E3. Oh, that's a much G4, much stronger, much better. Very move. positionally, very that's good. A, that's a really good move. This, this is clearly... Actually, clearly actually I was, was going to say he should have taken on F5 and just gone knight G3. And actually, perhaps that wasn't that bad for white. But maybe anyway, this that's this is okay. maybe this is okay. I mean, I, I'd take, I, I prefer black here, it has to be said. Um, yeah. The two bishops, that G pawn potentially is going to be very, very good. So knight G3, is he just going to take that off? Or has he got knight D4? Oh, no, maybe not. No, I think this is correct. I think knight H4 is correct. Because he yeah. wants to go into E3. So take on d6. Is knight f5? Knight e4? I think knight f5 was a good move. I think he should have played knight f5, frankly. Well, we can, can we play queen d4 here, Dan? Or are we going to get pins? Bishop, we're going to allow bishop move. Yeah, I think it was a yeah a pin. I but think he intended queen d4. I think he missed bishop. Bishop e2. Yeah. But actually, this, but I mean, this. Oh, that's oh, that's a bit tricky is, now. Oh, this is getting a bit more interesting. Yeah, we love a knight on c5. Bishop e4, maybe, or... Hi, decoder. Bishop e4. Um, yeah, but can, I think just c6 here, and I think it's probably 
it it's okay. Six, but then F that may be F five. F five is a good move. I Your think move F five. I like that. And then the queen's coming to F four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah is this, is, and this is this is Shreyas is starting to fight back. Bishop D five. That's probably wise, actually. Bishop D five. Well, that's a nice little pin, isn't it? Um, Bishop yeah. E four, knight E four. Okay. Have we got knight F six there? Looks not, like it. Not sure. Maybe I'm not sure about knight. Well, maybe knight F six. I probably wasn't. I'm not sure about that move actually. Oh, is the knight trapped? Yeah. The knight well, not, knight G eight is possible. Oh. But knight. I don't like it. I think knight f6 was a mistake. It felt wrong. Okay, yeah. so now rook g1. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe this is okay. Yeah, but just put the queen back. It's fine for black, isn't it? Well, rook to, oh, oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Queen f6, solid. Rock solid. So what's he now up? He's a piece for two, he's a knight for two pawns up. Maybe play a move like a6 here, just so he don't, doesn't have to worry about the back rank. Yeah, that's practical. Um, or b6. I'm not sure which is better. What would you do, b6 or a6? I, I mean, he's just take it. Or can he take that? Yeah, I wasn't sure about that. It just in practical terms. Is it rook, at, rook e5, then rook f8? I suppose is that that's probably okay. Yeah. Rook e, okay, maybe he's okay. d5, yeah. He's holding this now. I suppose, in a sense, you know, if if he knows he can get away with this, then it in in a sense it's a yeah. practical move. Yes. Yeah. Now this is just this is just winning for Thomas. Now this is just technique. B five or B six. B five is a good move. Game over. What's the time situation? Oh, he's got enough yeah, time. Yeah, he's going to win this. I mean, yeah. it's game over. A six maybe or can be it. Yeah, A six just depends. So, on. sorry, Natasha, did you say there's no increment? There's no increment. It's yes, yeah, sudden death. Yeah, I'm impressed that that Keith. Sorry, well, I know I'm switching players here, but this is this yeah. is basically all over, yeah. isn't it? So Keith hasn't slept at all. Is that what you're telling me? I I think that's right. He certainly, if he slept, it isn't much because he's been playing. You know, he's played. Let's see how many games he's played. He's played. Um, uh, where is it? Two hundred and nine games since five o'clock yesterday. Um, so if the games are, you know, uh, yeah, ten, ten. Or something, that's that's already twenty four hours. Yeah, I think the thing that has to be said about Keith, I would say, uh, his end game technique, if apart from the likes of maybe John Spielman and maybe Mickey Adams, he's probably as good as anyone. Dan, would you agree with that? I mean, you've got. Those two are probably in their own league of mm. te technical, but outside that, give me give a rook and pawn ending to Keith. He yeah. can pretty much outplay anybody. Yeah, no, I agree. He's, and in end, in end game, so in fast chess, because he's such a skilled end game player, he's actually a very effective blitz player because he can yeah. just win these end games. His, his end games are, are pretty much. Apart from the absolute elite of chess, like those two, like John Spielman and Mickey, um, Keith is pretty much as good as anyone or better than anyone. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. That means he's very efficient at converting in the end game. That's well, why. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's very quick. By the way, did, did, you, did you see his book? Did you see his book on, the, on end games? Arkle on end games. I, it's no, I, I haven't. Have, have it. I've got it just here. You can there you go. Oh, you got it. It's good. I tell you, I really enjoyed it. It's and what was refreshing about it was that he wasn't using computer analysis to analyze these end games. He was just no. saying, "I felt that this was the right Hi, idea." Fiona, thank you. That kind of Thanks. thing. So you know, I thought that was really refreshing. He wasn't doing you know ten pages of the computer says this. He was just. No, I mean, I felt this was the right way to press or something like that, and that's it was very good. Well, actually, that's very much how John Spielman talks about end games as well. Yeah. He just has a natural talking thank to John you, about Fiona. end games. Thank you so much, and well done. He's, He's just got a way. natural instinct. So, we're going to watch a bit of a meat, Garzy. Let's see a meat. Awesome. Yes, a meat. I played, and this guy is seriously good at blitz. 
He's really? fast, isn't he? I he mean, well, he's not only fast. Well, this game's a bit over, isn't it? He's two pieces up. I don't think Dell Chess King. Well, his rating's seven five two. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> a bit of a miss. This is yeah. Okay, I think this is going to be. Um, Meat is a fantastic blitz player. I have to say, I'm very impressed with his play. He's very very fast and plays really really good chess. Very solid. Doesn't make okay. many mistakes. Oh, this is a big one. Mickey Adams against Siddharth. Who's who's Siddharth? Siddharth is I don't know exactly. Um, the is Singapore, and oh. I think has okay. lived in England as well. He's got quite a nice position, actually. Well, I mean, it's, it's not bad. Me, yeah, but Jules, have you seen? Did you see the recent uh, Carlson, Carlson? Yeah, throw? Carlson against. So uh, I saw the first game. Amazing game. It was the ex exchange Queen's Gambit, very similar to this, and it and was, it Carlson's was. technique was out of this world. Well, it was perfect. It he was played a perfect game. Yeah. H four, Rook G three. The way he tied him up at the end. Yeah. I mean. B three at the end, beautiful. Yeah. It was um, it was perfect. I mean, I don't think Alpha Zero or Stockfish could have done it any better. Actually, no, that's how that's how good it was. I think it was perfection. The thing is, you see games like this between you know a very strong player and a weaker player, but for Carlson to do that against Wesley, mm. that was really something. Well, now Mickey's just winning, isn't it? It's game over now. He's won a pawn, a6 is weak, knight's coming into c6 with a fork. Yeah, this is suddenly in the space of about three moves. Um, it's just gone. It's just completely over. It's funny, um, I would absolutely hate to play those Queen's Gambit accepted positions with black because it just feels to me as though white is able to target those weak squares on the queen side yeah, um, you know, A6, and, and it just feels like you're on a hiding to nothing. I mean... What's your counter players, Black? That's what you're asking. What, exactly. What's... Well, optically, Black's position looks quite good, you know, just looking at the active pieces. But the problem is White doesn't have any weaknesses. There's nothing to, to attack. Yeah. And Black's always got these long-term queenside pawn weaknesses. Yeah. Well, Black exactly. resigned... Yeah, it's that's yeah. just over. Mickey's two pawns up with the well, yeah, I mean that's just knight C five, it's just hopeless. Can we can we tune into Keith then as he's the man of the moment? We let's see the master. The Keith. Let's play, Keith. No, he's not playing right now. Um he's, oh, okay. he's I think he must be he must have he must be having a sleep. A tactical snooze. Yeah. Very good. Have you ever played a marathon like this, Jules? Yes, I did. I did, and I won it. It was a 10-minute all-nighter, oh. playing from 6 in the evening till 6 in the morning. Wow. It was an all-play all of about 100, 200, 100 players or plus, and I finished about – I played all my games and finished about three hours before the next person. Wow. I was I, – I was – even though I say so myself, but that's when I was a lot younger. I was probably – in my early to mid twenties, so that's when I had lots of energy and didn't really get tired. Right, Tash, have um, you played? Have you played a marathon? No, um, I played some of the. I played some and commentated some last year, and yeah. um, I took the tactic to play in the middle of the night because um, then I thought. Uh, Pick them off. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could, I could win some games in the night. But actually, uh, last year it was really strong in the middle of the night because all these people that were you know going for winning the event we're playing throughout the night so it was right a, a tough old game I, pl I played a european blitz championship in Cannes a few years ago yeah and they they started um with yeah some some started like something 10 in the morning and went through to um six in the evening that was the the preliminary and then they they had a cut of the top 20 players i made the cut yeah. and then they had from something like seven in the evening till you know 10 um <laughs> and we, we played this kind of final but i was absolutely shattered 
Yeah. yeah it's, uh, because I only I only just made I made the cut, just sneaked in. But when it came to the final thing, I was just dead on my feet. Yeah. Well, it was, Dan, that uh, reminds me when we were in Aviemore or near there, and oh. we did a tandem hundred board simul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a serious amount of walking, wasn't it? That was absolutely shattering as well. Yeah. I was exhausted sure. after that. But Jordan, I was... Dan, you won't believe this. I've just seen in the chat, Keith is not sleeping. He's actually off in another tournament playing the ECF Grand Prix. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if this one, if, if someone starts catching him up, he'll come back here. <laughs> this is Grand Prix where you earn points. Well, each <laughs> he's, um, he, I, he's gonna, I don't think anyone's catching Keith. I mean, he's no, his lead's over 150. So, um, so what's the time control in the, in the, the Grand Prix? The Grand Prix, they, they alternate rapid and blitz. Um, I, I I don't remember actually whether it's a rapid or a blitz, um, but it could it would it wouldn't be longer than um, uh, ten minutes a game. That would be the longest, I think. Yeah. But I I found in this you know so basically it was yeah ten in the morning <coughs> till ten at night. I found that you went in waves, and mm. there were times where you were just in a flow and everything yeah. went fine, and then you just you know blood sugar crash, and yeah. Then, you know, you would just, I was wiped for several games. I just couldn't pick it up. And then, yeah, you try to raise yourself again, got a bit of luck yeah. or something. But, yeah, stamina, gee. Alex Holoshek is saying it's five plus zero time control on the Grand Prix today. So at least Keith no. will be in practice with the time control. <laughs> That's mad. Jeez, Keith. What I love about Keith, obviously he was brilliant on the Grand Prix circuit many years ago. And he just loves chess. I mean, that's, and he's a brilliant player. And he just loves the game, you know, and that's just, and he still probably loves it as much now as when he started playing what? He probably started playing 45 years ago. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, he's a bit older than us. He probably started playing 50 years ago. And he still loves it as much now as he did when he first started. It's fantastic. Yeah. And he's, well, he's hang on. apparently, and also, I didn't realise because I played. He's he's got a brother who's very good as well. Oh yeah, he, absolutely. Yeah, his yes. brother's pretty reasonable, which I didn't really realise. Oh no, I remember playing. Uh, it's Nick Arkle, isn't it? I remember playing Nick. Yes. In and um, yeah, junior tournament. And I remember Dan because we're obviously the same age. I only just found out that we used to tussle with Simon Williams' brothers who were a lot older. Oh yeah. yeah, he's got a brother twenty years older who Tony. I, I, I didn't know that. With. Yes, Tony. And he and played his dad as well. His dad was a. I mean, Simon's dad was a really good chess player as and, well. And Jules, you remember what openings Tony played? He played the Dutch <laughs> and he played the French. And he played. <laughs> and I, I played lots of games with him. I played the Tarash, and against the Tarash, he played this. Sacrifice on about move four, where he played the move e4, d4, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, c5, yeah, c d5, e d5, e4. Really, so he had some e4. good tussles in that, yeah. And I had no idea, I just thought, well, they're both Williams, they both got ginger hair, <laughs> but <laughs> they're actually brothers as well, indeed. Oh. So, there we go, yeah, and his brother. He, was it Tony? Was a seriously good chess player as well. Very hot, very tough player to beat. Very Indeed. tough player to play. So yeah, there funny. you go. Someone in the comments saying, Dad played the Dutch as well. Absolutely. Dad played the Dutch as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good, strong, very good family. Very good. Okay, Tash, who are we watching here? Who's I'm now watching Rusty Bridges Who's against Rusty Bridges? Gazi. I'm um, afraid against a me, anyone less than 2,400. Is going to struggle. Yeah, yeah it's going to get blown. Most materials. A meat's just too good. And yeah. you know the first person who told me what a really strong and talented player a meat was, he said, this guy's seriously good, Tony Miles. Oh. I remember talking to Tony, and Tony said, this is amazing junior in the Midlands. 
uh, Amit Ghazi, who's phenomenally, ta- has huge talent and could go on to become a really strong chess player. Okay, so that, that was that was years and years ago. That would have been in the mid to late 80s, early 90s. So, I can't remember exactly. Maybe the early 90s, mid 90s. Right. Um, Tony told me um, about this young guy who was incredibly talented and had huge potential, and that was Amit Ghazi. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Said, it, said he said me really, really impressed him. Very good. I think actually Tony might have given him some private lessons as well, possibly. I'm not quite sure um, about that, but... Uh, Oh, I this... think we've got, a, we've got a draw here. Or is it? No. What is it? Winning for black. Yes, of course it's a win for black. E4. E3. <laughs> no, it's a draw. It's a draw. <laughs> it's a draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a draw. Oh, it's a draw. Oh, God. Oh, God. You We're not very bright, are we? Because it's still mate. <laughs> you can't. King G7. <laughs> King's King's too far away. Ooh. Yeah, it's a draw. Queen G6 is the move. Queen H6, Queen G6, King H8, Queen F7, stalemate. Okay, same thing. All right. It was That's a, a very famous draw. Oh, dear. Gosh, I thought that was winning, but see what I bit off the pace. Any yeah. other game? Big Al, should you watch a bit of Al? You play Big Al? It's a bit of Al. Big yeah. Al, who's he? He's playing a... T- oh, 23 oh, wait. Okay, this guy might put some resistance up. And Ali's the Ali's the exchange for a pawn up. Okay. Okay, so it's not completely over. Bishop C four. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. What do you think of this, Dan? Whip it off, King H eight four. Oh, we've got. Uh, uh, yeah, takes and King G two, and then you're threatening threatening a cheapo with Queen C three. Yes, yes. Oh, that, but that's very nasty for black. I don't. Black's pieces are just kind of split. I, I think objectively, we've got an, we've got a bishop and two pawns for a rook. This is probably close to winning for white because we're so active. We're materially almost level anyway. Yeah, and we've got we've got very active pieces. Yeah, bishop c four. Ooh. Probably what h6 maybe. I was gonna say h6 just kind of forced the issue, but now knight e4. Oh, it's check. Queen e4 oh, check. Okay. No. <laughs> knight e6. No, this this is the way to play. Ali. Oh, Ali's white. I thought Ali yes, was black. Yes. Oh no. Well, Ali's gonna win this then. Ali's gonna come. I would through. say so. Yeah. I thought for some reason Ali was black. I misread that. Yeah, this is just now very very good. That pin is absolutely lethal. Yeah, probably H four, H four, G four, G four. Oh, yeah. I go H four because I want to go H five. Yeah, I'm playing H four, but G four might actually be even better. As you actually, G four is probably even better, Dan. He hasn't. Or yeah. E four. It doesn't. They're all winning, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not the fact because materially it's virtually it's le- equal on material, but why it's just so active. The knight, the bishop, everything is fantastic. So, yeah, Ali's going to convert yeah, that's, this. That's a horrible move. He should have gone king h7, but it's horrible. It's, yeah, it's game over now. Yeah. Uh, what do we reckon like, here? Queen f4. Queen f4. Natasha looks very good. Then king g7. Then knight f7. Yeah, knight f7. Lovely. And then h6 and d8. Yes, that's probably the most, that probably would have been the best way to finish it, actually. But F four must be good. F four is just good. It's no, he's it's it, yeah. It's the belt and brace. Oh, oh no, F five is can't touched. be touched. Ah, now he's doing H four. Now we have to probably play H five. Yeah. Now H five. We should have played H five, but now White can play H five. Yeah. yeah, and that's absolutely crushing. Um, because you can't take on H five because tonight F five. Yeah, you black had to play h5. Black had to stop h5. Yeah, but it was it was completely gone. Yeah, it's it's, it's game over. It. I mean, the knight is just crushing. It's but it's nice, good technique from Ali. Good to see. Yeah. Um, Bourneville would push her. Is that Andy Martin? No, it's not. I'm no. not sure who it is. No, Does anyone in the chat know who's Bourneville? No, no, I can't see the picture very clearly. No, it's not. Yeah. It's clearly not Andy because Andy's an IM for one thing. Um, yeah, so just take on g6. 
yeah, yeah. Game over. Nice game. Nice yeah. game. Nice game. Very good. Okay. Anyone else? What's any yeah. other people? Oh, what's that? Who's against Mickey? Mickey's okay. playing this. Oh. Have we already seen Mickey against this? We've already seen this game, yeah. Sorry, just the thing about the rules. If you've already played someone, do they? Do you automatically are you prevented from being paired against them? Is that in the algorithm or? I, I I think just maybe just immediately next, but then other than that, you can again. So you can play oh. the same person several times. Just looking in the chat, Bourneville Woodpusher is John Pitcher now. Jules. Oh. We Denver. were on the same Denver. England team Denver. against John with John Pitcher in Denmark, and that was one of our moments of glory, Jules. It was. It was the world team. Was it under sixteen? World under sixteen, which we chalked up. We won. That we had Nigel. We had you, me, Ian Wells. Ian was Wells. It? Yeah, and, and John Pitcher. Wow. And John was a really very strong chess player. I'd never, I had no idea who he was. It was the first time I ever met him. And I remember thinking, gosh, this guy is seriously good. I was really impressed. I, th I thought he was a really, really strong player. Well, there you go. I beat, um, I beat Hanson. Who's, I beat Kern Hanson in that tournament. Um, I had no idea who Kurt was. And he, he went on to become quite a good player. And there was a massive tussle. Do you remember on board one when we played Iceland? Um, I think Nigel played Johan Jartersson. Nigel played Jartersson, yeah. Yeah, right. that was a big, that was a big beefy matchup between those two. That was one, that was one of the and of course we met the ultra genius, creative, very interesting guy, Joseph Klinger. Oh, Klinger was there. Yeah. yeah, Joseph. We dumped him in the shower with all his clothes on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nice. Joseph. Put up Della Corta against Macbeth. So Della Corta's been doing a lot of organisation work for this tournament. Oh. And um, Macbeth uh, is um, has was trying very hard to join the tournament and not getting the links to work. And he kept at it and kept at it. So he has entered as well. Um, Fantastic. And... Uh, so he's playing with that. Well, I have to say, Dan, these positions are quite interesting, aren't they? Because um, the bishops, they, that bishop on f3, is it a good piece or is it a bad piece? It's a good piece. I'm going to state that very clearly. Because uh, I normally, um, I can be on the black side and white side. And I, I find these positions actually very hard to play for both colours. I'm quite going to state that. Very clearly. Uh, I'm going to hang on. I'm going to stick these in because I'm getting a lot of echo. Wait a second. Actually, after that exchange of knights, then that's definitely improved black's position. If the knights don't come off, that queen doesn't get in, then it's a very different story. Hey, okay. Um, let me switch games. Um, there was lots of echo no. there. Yeah, happened. yeah. I think my sound might be not good. So um, if you I've, want... I've stuck in earphones. Talk, that, I, uh, let me message you might help. on the chat. That's uh, better. Let's put that one on. Yeah, Meek's winning again. Absolutely lethal. He is lethal. So he must be doing pretty well. Well, his rating is higher than Mickey's. Ah, oh, okay. His rating, and Meeks Garzi's rating, I mean, an I mean, Mickey is still a pretty useful blitz player. Um, but um, a meet is so fast, it's amazing. What's this? What's going on? Is everything okay? That should be fine. Um, should we switch games there? Probably. Well, probably this one's over. Yeah. 
So, Jules, how deep. often you said you 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 play quite a lot on Lee chess? You said so. How yeah, often, yeah, I'm going how often do you play? I play quite a lot. I haven't been playing that much recently because I've got things. I'm clearing out my flat in London, so I'm being I'm a bit busy with that. But right. I do enjoy. I much prefer the software on Lee chess. I find the boards a lot clearer. I find it hard moving the pieces on chess.com. For some reason, I get stuck. I find it a lot more tricky. So I just prefer everything on the. I, so I, that's why I just play on chess. I don't. I do my teaching on chess.com. I use Puzzle Run and stuff like that for my teaching. Right. But um, I, I, um, I like to play on chess. I just prefer the board, the look, and everything. So when you say teaching, you're doing individual I do, I'm doing Zoom. I teach at two schools. I teach at Westminster in my old school, St. Paul's. Right. And um, I do the classes online on Zoom or whatever, Google Class, whatever it's called, yeah. whatever the school has. And um, uh, I sort of use – they play – we play on chess.com. We have arena events. And I, I use all their – the puzzle – I mean, the chess puzzle rush and stuff is fantastic. Uh, for, as a way to teach, there's there's yeah, lots yeah. of good stuff there. It's a very good tool. I mean, and that's another reason you don't really need chess books in the same way because you've got so many puzzles on chess.com. It's just amazing. And uh, I did a lot of puzzle rushes. Um, did you do the five minute puzzle rush, Dan? I haven't done the puzzle rush. No, I. Um, do you know what? In the past year. I've really got into solving mating two problems. Well, get puzzle rush. It's got no. I'm, I'm I'm talking about artificial constructive oh, problems. Oh gosh! Problem. I know, I, I know, I know. I was totally anti this, but I found this old book in that bookcase over there, uh, something I hadn't picked up for years, and I started, you know, like on a tea break, I'd kind of solve one of these. It's like, you know, five minutes. It's, it's just kind of a nice thing to do, actually. And I really, you start to appreciate what makes a really good puzzle. Some are just stupid, you know, really easy. But then you get some really elegant ones where, you know, each piece counts for, mm. for just one thing. And, you know, the, the best composers, they're real artists. They are artists. Well, funnily enough, when I was uh, many years ago in the mid '80s, when I was in Brighton for a while, I, I lived with Byron Jacobs, and there was a time when Byron got into composing puzzles. Oh, really? And he composed some brilliant ones. He was wow. just a natural. He got into it. And I would see these puzzles. And I said, "Where have you got this from, Byron?" He said, "I composed it." And I thought, "What?" And he said, "Yeah, I composed it." Some of them were really, really nice. That's mad. Mate, mating twos or, or three or or what else? All sorts. Mating right. twos, three or wings. They end games. All sorts of different ones. I mean, it, you know, they're just just sort of problems. I mean, there are many types. I don't know if he ever got into the self mate or help help mate, but I was never into that kind of thing. No, I didn't. But I he, don't like. They're they're too too messed up. Yeah. You yeah. got to be. But he was a natural. He created some really quite nice ones, and he spent That's a whole brilliant. day on. So I was I was surprised but impressed. I thought, oh, you know. No, no, no that is fantastic. Um, yeah, somebody mentioned in the in the the comments here, saying talking about uh, Sam Lloyd, Mr. Lloyd, Sam Lloyd. Yeah, Sam Lloyd. He was the genius. Yeah. Okay, the genius. there there are some great ones there, but I discovered that there's this um, like online database where you can look up certain people, and you get some guys. Is it Kasparian or someone? Oh, yeah, well, his studies are amazing. But you used to get some guys who've, like, composed hundreds and hundreds of these mating twos. You get other guys, they've composed, like, three positions yeah. in their entire career. <laughs> and obviously, you know, that was their moment of glory. They got it published in a newspaper. And they're, and they're beautiful. They're really nice. Well, I have to say, Dan, even now, having played chess and looked at chess for so long, I still think, see things in live games. I still see tactical ideas, mating ideas I've never seen before. Really? Yes. Even now, I'm seeing wow. stuff. And 
that's why chess is just such an amazing game because I'm still looking and learning and stuff. And I'm thinking this is ridiculous. You'd think you'd have seen most things, but there's just so much more. Yeah. And, you know, that's why your puzzles makes in two. You see some, oh, it's rook f7. What happens after rook f7? Oh, you're going to lose queen, rook takes, and then rook b7. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but that's true. I've kind of, because I never really looked at these composed. Oh, this is the big game. This is a meet against Mickey. Sorry, we should. Oh, uh, yeah, we should, we should concentrate on this. Yeah. Go on. Uh, we'll we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's we'll park that conversation. This is, this is the game. Actually, Queen C six. Queen C six. That's a very cheeky move. Of, um, is Mickey in trouble here? Is Darcy playing a masterpiece. I think he might be. I okay. tell you, he is so, knight f four. I think. What mm. happens after knight f four, Dan? Okay, let, let me have a little think. Sometimes I think knight f4 is the only move here. Knight f4, threatening knight e2 check, by the way. Well, it's, well, no, because king h1. The knight's oh, it's knight. I was going to play knight, knight e4, knight e4. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I mean, beg the, your pardon. Basically, <laughs> the, the, the queen's attacked. I don't see another move. Yeah, knight f4 now. Is he going to play g3? But then the knight... What's he going to do? This is really interesting position, actually. Uh, yeah, because what's not? the material? Why, why not? I mean, yeah, but, but listen, why not G3? Are you going to check and go well, Queen H5? I can go Knight E2. Oh, maybe that controls it better. Okay, so Mickey. So basically, Mickey at the moment is a rook for a pawn up. Okay, he checks, checks and plays Knight G5. Yeah, that's just winning, isn't it? I think that's gone, hasn't it? Knight G or Knight F2. F2. Maybe better. Is it Queen D5 check? There we go. Yeah. 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 Class. Knight F3 is the only move. Then Knight D3. Yeah, yeah. pin. Yeah. He's got the pin, so it's gone, hasn't it? Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting idea. Okay, knight E4. Now knight G5, yeah. And that's resigns. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. Mickey's good. He's quite good. Mickey's not bad, but that was that's obviously the game by clearly, well, clearly the two strongest players playing at the moment by quite a mm. long way, I would say. But I've um, seen, uh, you know, I've seen Mickey play in proper blitz tournaments, and he he's his technique, his style is well. Perfect. I was there, Dan, in 1994 when Mickey had to play Tibby Arkov a playoff the whole day. God, that was stressful. Um, but the quality of play from both Mickey and Tiviarkov playing these five, ten, half hour, it got shorter and shorter. But the quality of play from both of them was just amazing to watch. I mean, both of them. Now, was that the PCA? That was the PCA, yeah. Right. That was the quarterfinals. Mickey was playing uh, Tiviarkov in the quarters. There was Kramnik was playing Kamsky. Mm -hmm. I think Anand was playing Romani Shin. I mean, it was good. It was good stuff. But um, okay, whole... let's have a, a quick think about this end game. Now, I'm just wondering how easy or not this position is to win. Well, it actually... must be a win. It must. It be must a win. be. But I, it's not that simple. Oh. I, think, I think. Well, how many pawns up are we? With three pawns up. Three. Okay, it must be. So winning. I think B five, and then bring the king over to F five. That's going to be winning. Right. Just do put it simply. On, we can yeah. put, yeah, B5, and now just get the king round to F5. Yeah. And then we've got moves like E4, H4, E5. We're going we're gonna to create another pass pawn on the king side. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to be a straightforward win. Yes. So, yeah, this is this is winning for, for Big Al. Yeah. In fact, you don't even need the pawn on A3. No, it's a, it doesn't matter. King yeah. to E2. Put the pawn on B7. Put the pawn on B7. Yeah, now B5. Now B7. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. And now A4. Yeah. Advance that pawn. And this is basically all over. He may as well put the pawn on A6. What's he doing? What's Ali doing here? Okay. Interesting. All right, then. What's Ali doing? Is he going to bring the king back oh, gonna to play, A4? No, he's going to play king G3 to H4. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. that's job yeah. done. That's going to do the job. Bishop G6, okay. Okay, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, A4, A5, just advance that. 
Um, it's because you've got the brakes with E5 and H4 and G5. Yeah. Yeah. He's putting up decent resistance, this guy. I've got to this say. This guy is. I mean, give him credit. I mean, it's been a horrible, very miserable position to defend. King H5, H4. And, I mean, eventually Ali's going to get his king across. Okay. Okay. This is fair enough. And now just advance the E pawn. Yeah. And that's going to be that, isn't it? Yeah, what's oh, what's the clock nice. times? Oh, Ali's Ali's only got ten seconds left. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, can he do it? Oh, that's a good move. Now King F seven. Okay, King F seven now. He's yeah, got it. He's yeah, where well, can he? He's still only got seven seconds. No, Ali's, oh. Ali's too good. Ali's too good. Ali's the master. <laughs> he's got five. He's got six seconds too much. Uh, is it ooh, off the crossbar in that position? Oh no, I was going to say something which was wrong. No, <laughs> I was going to say I thought A8 equals knight was stalemate, but it's not because the it's bishop can move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's also King oh, C's. Oh, anyway. How do we move on? Are you moving to the game? What was that? Maybe that's no, Tasha's moved us on. Do you think she's got problems with her? Mike so we got Mickey against Sebastian. Now who's Sebastian? Rated seventeen something. Seven. I've got no idea. Well, he clearly he's just a, a player who you know is getting a great opportunity to tussle Nin with what England. Nin well, ninety-five. Yeah, that's quite that's one nil. Actually, Jules, this looks like something that some of your school kids would. It play. is. It is. Bishop G five, Knight D five. Thank you very much. It's funny though, Dan, what's happened in chess. Because when I was a junior play, or in my early teens, I always felt, to me, the most logical move against, well, the most logical move on move three for white was bishop c4, not bishop yeah. b5. Yes. And I always felt the most logical move against bishop b5 was, was knight, knight f6. Six. <laughs> but it wasn't and very it's popular. Fast. I was. I was Okay, ahead of my time. And let me tell you this: against yeah. e4, I never thought that e5 was the best move. Really, I never, as black, I never in my chess career played e5. You can check the databases. I never played e4 and e5 with black because as yeah, a but kid, you, but from a very early age, you were an expert in the Shvetsnikov and then the Nidor, weren't you? Yeah, but before then, I played the Lerventov. Oh, you played the Lerventals. Well, I've always you? played with a backward e port, backward d port. <laughs> I've got to ask you, actually. But just very quickly, but just the reason I didn't like e4, e5 with black, yeah, because it, it was even as a kid, it was obvious to me that that was a bad move because it's you're playing the same as your opponent, the copycat, but your opponent's got an extra move. I mean, yeah. duh. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. That's what I thought about. Well, I've got to ask you, because Please. I always tell, I t when my brother came back to playing chess after about a 20-year hiatus, Jeremy, I said, if you're going to come back, play good openings. So I said, against D4, don't play any old rubbish. I said, try the Queen's Gambit accepted. That's what one of our great English players, Matthew Sadler, plays. Yeah. It's really solid. And as you get better, you can still play better players with it. Yeah. So you won't have to change the opening. And I said against the Sicilia, against E4, play the Nidolf. Because that's what Fisher played, Kasparov. It's a great opening. Obviously, you played it when you were playing. You played it very well. But it, at the very top level now, it seems to be coming under a bit of pressure, from what I can tell. Well, I'm Is not... that being a bit harsh? Well, okay, a couple of things. One, there's a massive difference between playing at this opening at top levels yeah. and playing at, say, club level. I always yeah. think at club level, it is yeah. a fantastic opening I because agree. in practical terms, it is really difficult for White to actually control the, yeah. the, the, the strategic parts of the game. Well, strategically, it's better for Black, isn't it? Exactly. Um, but even at the top level... I think, you know, basically, Caruana has had a year to find something really <laughs> evil. 
really evil. And it should have been a draw, but yeah. I mean, actually, it was a brilliant piece of preparation. It was a brilliant practical choice from Caruana. It was a brilliant end game. I mean, for me, that was one of the best games of chess, of modern chess that I've seen in terms of perfect kind of opening preparation, perfect middle game and end game. And a brilliant end game. Fantastic. And he, and even then, he only just got it over the line. It, it was one of the great games. It was brilliant. It was, one of, yeah. it was one of the greatest games. We're talking about the game between Caruana versus Maxime Vachilagrave in one of the Grand Prix tournaments. It was, I mean, Caruana hadn't played any chess for a year, had he? And um, it, it was the first game back for the... Was it the first game of the candidates? At I, the yeah, half? I think it was. I think it was. It was brilliant. And but, it was phenomenal. Yeah, so... You know, I don't think there's any doubt about the the night off. Ah, oh, I can see I am Trendle. I took up the French on the back of Danny's foxy openings. Wow, that was a long time ago. Hey, French, well. no, an uh, an opening I really like as well. But anyway, um, well, the French. I mean, Simon Williams plays the French, doesn't he? I remember Neil McDonald played the French a lot. Yeah. Simon Knott, another player who went to my school, played the French. I mean, Berev, do you remember Afghani Berev played the French defence? Yusupov that, played the French? But the reason I, I took up the French was that I could play it against D4 as well. I when, don't recall you playing the French, Dan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, I needed an alternative, and it fitted in with my D4 openings because against D4, I like to play E6. Yeah. And what did you do after C4? Well, that's B4 the thing. Check? I either played Bishop B4 check, which is yeah. quite tricky, and I've got the F pawn in reserve. Yeah. And there are actually some really nice systems in that. Uh, but half – I well, no, not half the time. I would say about 40% of the time, roughly – after yeah. D4, E6, a lot of white players used to play E4 there anyway. Really? So it was actually very useful to have the French in my repertoire. When do, I can't, I don't recall you playing it at all, Dan. It's terrible. But I only sort of took it up in, let's say, oh, geez, I can't remember. I mean, I recall late, you Late playing. 80s, I can't remember. Shveshnikov, low. Yeah, Shveshnikov and the Nidorf. And then you got – I always felt you were really brilliant. You always played the Nidorf really, really well. Um, very good at that. Now, against D4, what did you do against – I'm trying to think what you did against D4. Well, I – Is it the Nimzo you played? I played, you... I played, yeah, Nimzo, um, but basically I switched to the Queen's Gambit decline. The Tartakova. Oh, Queen's Gambit, you taught me the Tartakova. I remember yeah, persuading you to play the Tart. <laughs> Yes, the Tartakov in Hungary. That's right. Catch Yes. Oh, my God. That was scary. Me playing a sensible opening with black. Ah, somebody said found a game against Hort from 89 where Mr. King played E5. Was a quick draw, though. Okay, little. there's a little story (laughs) associated with that game. Do you want to... Okay, here's the story. Basically... Um... I had black. I was I was in all play all tournament, and I had black against Hort in about yeah. round three. Yeah. And after the pairings came out, of obviously that you know drawing drawing of lots before the first round, it's at the reception at the tournament. We've knocked back a couple of couple of glasses, and Hort kind of comes over to me and goes, "Ah, Daniel, hello, how are you?" <laughs> And he he starts on. He says, "Oh, life of chess professional, very very difficult these days. Very difficult." I go, "Okay, yeah, yeah, it's tough, isn't it, Vlasti?" He said, "Oh, yes, in it is day of round three. We are playing, we are playing, but day of round three. I must, I must drive to south of Germany and play simultaneous display." <laughs> I have to do this. I have to do this. But we are playing. What do we do? <laughs> and he said, and he, he said, would you, would you like draw? I must play simultaneous display. So I thought, listen, I've got black against Flasty. Yeah. And it so was. we. Well, that is peak. When was this, Dan? How long? Which was this? Uh, was this? 
I think that would have been the late eighties. Okay, he was past his best, but he but he, he was still an amazing. He's player. still decent. So there you go. You can you yeah. can uh, you can do me for for agreeing a, a prearranged draw if you like. It was some time ago. But Vlasti, the thing is, he was such a nice guy, and you know. Well, he, he was so well, persuasive. He said, "Oh, it is terrible. I must play simul days." But he was probably getting paid a fortune for doing the simul, and you know, playing in some round robin oh, tournament. He, but his fee would probably be more for the simul than the playing in the tournament. Yeah. Well, in in the seventies, in the mid seventies, I think he actually got to twenty six hundred. I think plastic. I think he reached. Oh, I mean, he was, he was playing in the candidates. He was, yeah, he was. He was fantastic he was player. His positional understanding was yeah. unreal. He unreal. Was, yeah, very. I won. Very I played him at Vite one year, and sw I beat him. I was black. I swindled him. I had this terrible position. I think I was black. I might have been white actually. No, I think I was black, and he got short of time and. Um, he was a bit gutted afterwards that I yeah. treated him so badly. But my attitude was, well, if you do get short of time, <laughs> bad things you've only got happen. yourself to blame. You've only got yourself to blame. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Listen, should we, we we should look at a game of chess. Who's playing? So that's we got Ali, Ali, Ali Mortasavi. Ali, with the white Ali is playing another masterpiece, it, and he's playing against Shreyas. Oh, this is Ali against Shreyas. We, we should be. We should, we should be. Um, all eyes on this, Jules. All eyes. Concentration. Concentrate. Concentrate. Well, it's clearly better for Ali. Two bishops. A lovely D pawn. D five actually looks like a very strong move. If it's if it doesn't lose anything, it basically wins. That is my assessment of the move. Well, I'm looking at it. And I don't see what's wrong with d5. He didn't no, do it. No, well, that might even be stronger, actually. Now we can take on e5 with the pawn. Yeah, uh, yeah. the bishop yeah. on g2 is so a pin. Pin. Yeah, that's even. And the point. Well, rook f7, is that a move? Maybe that's a move, rook f7. Because bishop d5, oh, he's gone. Now queen d5 checks probably very good and queen e6. Oh, no, bishop takes d5. Does that win immediately? Yeah, you could play, but you mean bishop c6 and queen d5. Bishop c6 yeah, and queen winning. d5. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Ali on scintillating form. Ali's a very, very good blitz player. And now we can just take on c6 because queen yeah. f2, king h1. King h1, game over. Yeah. Nice game. No, Ali's good. Ali's a good blitz player. Yeah, yeah, he plays a lot. He's he's Tash, you're back. Can you he hear us, Natasha? Can you hear us? Hi, guys. Thank You're there. you ever so much. It's been really brilliant. Thank you. Are we so being much. I, I won't be able to hear what you're saying, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I want to say a huge thank you for being on the stream. You're more and, than welcome. Uh, you're welcome. I'm going to wave goodbye. Um, okay. And well, I've got to just reset the software. But thank you. Absolutely Dad, wonderful. Um, good to well. see you both. And see you soon. Tash, Thank good to you. see you. Jules, it was a pleasure. 